Okay, our next speaker, boy, that's a hard act to follow, David. <laughs> uh, David Ho works at the Wall Street Journal. He is the founding editor of the Wall Street Journal's iPad and tablet app. So he is like editorial and it's the whole shebang, right? Um, so he's, oh, he's all set up. You're ready to go. Excellent. All right, David Ho. Is this set up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Good morning. Now, I know all of you know something about mobile technology because I've been up in that corner of the room up there and this is what you look like. <laughs> if you can spare some time for me too, I'd appreciate it. Um, so is everyone, is everyone having a good conference so far? Yeah. Everyone happy to be in Austin? Yeah. There we go. So I uh, flew in from New York on Thursday and it was so cold, I thought there had been some mistake, and I was in a different city. <laughs> um, now, back in New York, I have two kids, and uh, because of them, I know about this thing called the Disney Vault. Have you heard about this? This is that place where they lock up the Little Mermaid for like years at a time. <laughs> um, well, inspired by that, today I would like to bring you mobile secrets from the WSJ Vault. Now. I have some experience being locked up. Um, three years ago, before the iPad came out, and believe it or not, it's only been three years, um, the powers that be at News Corp and Dow Jones and the Wall Street Journal decided to lock six people in a windowless room for six weeks and told them, you will build us an iPad app. I was one of those people. Three years later, I'm still feeling a little traumatized by the experience. Um, but it's been a really good three years. I mean, we've accomplished a lot. So we've created a whole family of apps and mobile experiences. We're on iPad, on Android tablets, a whole variety of phones. We have WSJ, Barron's, MarketWatch. There's a lot going on. Um, now, last year, and imagine this is like a really big touch screen for a second. But would you have laughed if I hadn't said anything? <laughs> um, so last fall, we launched our universal app, which uh, sort of took our learnings and technology from the iPad and combined it with our iPhone presence as well. Um, we also have streaming stories, which I know last year Raju mentioned when he was here. Um, streaming stories are a story format really geared towards breaking news and ongoing stories that incorporate um, tweets, uh, video, um, long-form stories, blog posts, everything. And it's all tailored specifically for a mobile experience. Um, earlier this year, maybe a couple months ago, we launched our intentional design website. This is our spin on responsive design, which I know you heard about. Uh, we have a BlackBerry 10 app, which just came out. And uh, around the same time, we launched our uh, Korea language and Japanese language editions across our mobile platforms. So we've been busy. Um, now, so how does all this work uh, in real world circumstances? Well, I mean, I'm sure none of you are aware it's been a kind of a busy uh, news week so far. Um, so yesterday, this is kind of how it played out across our mobile platforms. Um, so the Boston story, everything from push alerts to apps to st streaming stories to video. You know, it was, a lot was happening in a lot of places and I was up very late last night. Um, also, across our tablet edition, we did it as well, um, but with a different experience, you know. So we have the streams, we have the video, the slideshows, the layout experience. Um, our tablet edition on iPad and Android tablets has been very, very successful. Um, we were the first newspaper app in the iTunes Hall of Fame, and uh, until very recently, the only one. Uh, it combines the best lessons of print. And this is not to say, this is not a print replica. This is not a carbon copy of print. This is not a PDF that's been tossed onto a tablet. This is about learning from print, about the, the reading experience, the news consumption experience. What does it have to offer us? I mean, there was a lot of smack talk about the newspaper yesterday. Um, 
but you know, there are things that are valuable there that can teach us. So we try to take the best elements of print and combine it with the power of digital to create an entirely new experience, specifically for tablets. Um, we uh, pioneered this model of having the print content enhanced, but also side by side with it having updating web content as well. And this has sort of gotten pretty popular lately with a lot of apps. Um, and we have exceptional engagement. People use our apps a lot. They consume journal content a lot. And I want to talk to you, my second half here, um, about how you can do that too. You know, what are the tips you have for engagement? So um, I have uh, five specific things I want to share with you. So number one, and this is like, a, this is a little meta, right? Um, so, number one tip is also my personal number one rule for the work I do in mobile. Do not annoy. Anybody remember the blink tag? <laughs> it is so easy to piss people off on a mobile device. Has anyone in this room ever been really pissed at their mobile device? There you go. I know. Whenever I try to log into anything, the autocorrect changes my name to Honda. <laughs> I do this every day. Um, so, <laughs> there's a lot of things that are annoying, you know, uh, performance, uh, slowness, crashing, instability, but things like, you know, animation, transitions. Um, and the thing you have to really be careful about is the thing that you think is really, really cool. Because the thing, you, the thing you think is really, really cool is probably cool once. It's not cool the fifth time or the tenth time or the hundredth time you've experienced it. Then it starts to get annoying. Um, now, if you annoy your readers, they will tell you, which brings us to tip number two. Listen to your readers. Now, our WSJ apps across various app stores have maybe you know, 10,000, 12,000 written comments. I've read every single one. Your readers, your users, they have important things to say, and you should listen to them. The feedback is very valuable. They can help you troubleshoot mysterious technology problems. They can tell you what's working and what's not. They can you know, tell you what they want. Hey, for example, as you can see, Mark Twain here thinks we need more font sizes. <laughs> it, if that's really Mark Twain, I can understand why he would want the text to be bigger. <laughs> so you should listen. Listen to them. Now, listening to your readers is also part of something bigger, and that's um, make it an experience. So uh, I've been a journalist for almost 20 years now, and most of that time spent as a reporter. And as a reporter, my focus was really get it right, get it first, get it fast, and make it sing. News apps need to sing. They need to be as helpful and relevant and beautiful as the stories they deliver, because this is a battle for people's time. You know, we need to create experiences that are worth people's time to make them want to come to us, to make them want to stay. You know, taking the PDF file and shoving it on the iPad is not enough. You need to make something that's special and just for that audience. Now, you hear a lot these days about thinking mobile first. Has anyone ever heard about thinking mobile first? Yeah? I'm sure. You hear this phrase a lot. Well, the first step in thinking mobile first is don't think mobile last. <laughs> Which brings me to tip number four. Beware of click here. Now, I'm, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but the mouse is dead. It just doesn't know it's been caught in a better mousetrap yet. You hear about it every day. 
You know, tablets outselling laptops, tablets going to outsell desktops. You've got voice recognition, you've got touch screens, you've got eye tracking technology. You've got that little Google Glass thing that you rub on the side of your head. Phrases like these drive me nuts because when you see click here or mouse over this on a touch screen device, you're basically insulting the reader. You're telling them, this is not for you. This wasn't designed for you. You are on a secondary platform. This was for something else, and you're just getting a regurgitated version of it. So be careful of this language. You know, try to think about who your audience is and what devices they're using. Now, I have one final tip, and the tip is that I imagine this is very stressful. It's a very stressful time. The mobile revolution is very stressful. I know the room is full of journalists and students and professors and business people, so I, I imagine there's a huge quantity of stress in this room. Yes. So if the mobile revolution is stressing you out, I do highly recommend that you play Fruit Ninja. <laughs> this person has, knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, if you play Fruit Ninja, not only will you relieve your stress by like slashing watermelons and things, but you also learn a lot about touchscreen technology at the same time. So for now, that's all I got. So thank you very much. Please go forth, be mobile.